when you look at the way that the program's headed, when you look at development type of kids that are coming out of it, like what does it mean to be a Penn Stater? What kind of foundational characteristics do you see and some of the things that you've carried on with you and, and hold hold near and dear when it comes to when it comes to your alma mater? Yeah, um, just, you know, in my mind, uh, just the history of the program and just uh, like I think Coach Franklin and, and even you know, Penn State as a whole, as a fan base, they do a great job of, of recognizing, you know, the greats that came before. And just, you know, being in the building and walking down to the locker room or team room and seeing like the, the uh, Hall, of, Hall of Fame on All-American wall and just seeing all the Letterman and stuff up there, like, how can you not feel, you know, you know, prideful and stuff, you know, seeing guys like when I came in, like you had, like, seeing all the stuff that you had on the wall and um, other guys that played my position and stuff, like, how can you not feel juiced up to try and continue that legacy of wearing the blue and white? Um, you know, I think, um, you know, there's so much pride to be a part of Penn State in the line when you walk around. I mean, I get recognized just as much as being a Penn State football player than I do as a Steeler. And, um, you know, it, wearing that blue and white carries a lot of weight on it. And, football tees, college basketball tees, whatever you need, Mercury has you covered with the best merch out there. We're talking about high quality clothing, inexpensive, and the best part is I have a 15% discount for everybody who goes and gets some right now. Use the code below, hit the link in the description, and go get your merch now. Use the code to get 15% off. What are you waiting on? Go do it. What's going on, folks? Back again, continuing our off-season series. Uh, but this week, Brandon and I are going to keep it light because we got some guests that I think you guys are going to be really excited about. Quick little interview with one of the all-time greats, Pat Fryermuth. He's going to give you a little insight on his career. He's going to give you a little insight on the current tight end room. Tyler Warren being one of his main young heads when he was in when he was still up on campus. Um, and overall, just a great interview. Just getting to know his mentality, what made him successful. So uh, we're going to bring this to you, B. You line this thing up, man. I got to give you some credit. So uh, we appreciate that. What do you got for Pat? No, man. Big shout out to Pat and Muth down there in Pittsburgh. A lot of, uh, you know, Steelers fans. He, I feel like he fits perfectly in that program or in that organization, I should say. And, uh, you know, I've watched him from afar since he joined and he's a big fan. Love the way he plays. So definitely wanted to reach out to him. We got the tight ends going. There's a lot of tight ends out there. He mentions a bunch, you know. Uh, so he's very um, aware of the Penn State lineage and history and all around great dude, man. So I think you guys would like this. Give you an in-depth look into our letterman. And without further ado, Pat Fryermuth. Are you paying too much for health insurance? Too busy to read long, complicated policies? Well, guess what? Here at The Pocket, we got a solution for you. Madi Health. Patrick Madi, former letterman. He's doing a fantastic job in this industry. He leverages years of expertise to build a customized health insurance policy for you and your needs. Individual plans, family plans. Patrick ensures you get the best protection for your health and budget. Madi Health, one broker, endless solutions. Now offering up to $500 cash bonus for every customer referral. So quit overpaying for your health insurance. Visit ModiHealth.com to schedule a free consultation with Patrick himself. And we got Pat Fryermuth, man. I've been looking forward to this interview for a minute. Yes. I've been looking forward to this interview for a minute, dude. It's uh, I haven't gotten to formally meet you too many times, but this will be good. Um, always had a ton of respect for the way you played the game. Always had a ton of respect for the way you wore the blue and white and represented us. So, And you're doing it. Uh, out in Pittsburgh now, so yeah. uh, make sure you're make sure you're touching home on the home route market there. But uh, <laughs> Pat, I appreciate you taking the time, brother. Yeah, so, man, anytime, anytime, anytime. Speaking of that, what's been up, dude? Um, give us your status. You know, yeah. here, what you're looking forward to this off season. Yeah. You know, give us give us kind of a life update here. Yeah, um, you know. I'm, just back, I built a house in Boston two years ago, so I live here in the off season. Uh, it's close by my family and friends, and uh, just been hanging out here. Started training today for the first first time in a couple of weeks, and uh, um, just got back from Florida with, with some, of, some of my friends. And I'm actually currently enrolled at Penn State right now, taking classes to finish up, get my degree. Um, so I've just been doing that. So it's, it's been it's been quiet. 
as a guy who had to come back and finish, I respect that, dude. The world <laughs> camp <It> is brutal. <laughs> I have a Zoom class later uh, with, I think it was Zoom with a couple kids. We got a group project to do, and <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it, but it's good. It's good. I promise my mom I get my degree, so. There you go. I'm excited to see a smile on her face once I get it. Yeah. Uh, the, sooner, the sooner the better. As yeah, absolutely. Now, un- unlike y'all, I finished at Penn State, but I went back to get my master's a year ago at 28. Yeah. Get it done as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. But no, man, that's great to hear. What is this, year three in the league? Yeah, going, yeah, going into year four. Going into year, year four, so completed year three, excuse me. Um and we just had Juwan on, and we, he spoke about when you were coming in, he was kind of leaving. And I kind of want to get into your your time at Penn State because opposite, you know, we've had Jasicki on here and Juwan, and their, their journeys were great, obviously, but you kind of stepped on campus ready to go. Mm-hmm. You know, very rare for a true freshman to, you know, be, be that ready to play pretty much mm-hmm. physically and mentally. And you kind of stepped on the scene and never looked back. What what was it that what was it your high school experience? Maybe your parents, mentors that had you ready to go uh, so early. Yeah, um, so I had kind of a unique high school story. Um, you know, I did two years in my public high school and then uh, played quarterback in the wing T offense. It was, it was not too good. <laughs> and then uh, transferred to uh, private school to repeat my sophomore year. Uh, my cousin was actually. He coached all around college for a little bit, and then he got a head coaching job at like a prep school here. And uh, repeated my sophomore year there, so did three years there. And uh, you know, I kind of look at that as like my redshirt year um, in a way. Like I just did my redshirt year in high school, um, and I came in obviously older than some of the kids in my class. I think I was the oldest one. And, um, you know, I've always been kind of uh, more mature for for kids my age, especially in high school and stuff. Like I kind of kind of understood like what. It, what it took uh, being around like my brother who played Division three football and uh, my uncle was office line coach at various colleges uh, coach with Joe Mo at, at UConn and stuff so nice. um, just been just kind of like seeing what it takes being around being around like those college athletes going to games and stuff I'm um, just taking it all in um, you know just when I got to Penn State uh, you know I was fortunate the situation I was in where, where Mike left um and there's kind of just competition. Uh, I think Hollywood and Danny Dalton and Bowers were there. And they, they they were great to me, man. They 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 took me under their wing, and there was no like jealousy or anything. Like when I started um, getting it going, and I think you know my biggest thing that I, I, I took when I was in there was just kind of like um, you know I I got to be good at really one thing, and then the rest will follow. And I think the thing that I, that they kind of um, you know appreciated was I kind of just shut up and, and went to work. And I think I got the respect from Trace and, and, and Jew and all the other guys, um, you know, early on because I just kind of didn't talk much, did, went about my business and, um, you know, I kind of pride myself on the block in the beginning uh, to kind of help me put on the field and the rest was, the rest of something, Trace just kind of threw me the ball when I was open. I didn't really do much to be honest. Uh, <laughs> ball just kind of find me sometimes and uh, especially in the red zone. So um, it was a great first year, man. It was a great first year. You know what's funny is just listening to you talk about that. Like, I always say it because people talk about the same thing. Like, I didn't early enroll. I was yeah. I, I was young younger um, mm-hmm. in my group, but I came in, played, started, and I always talk like I was just dumb. Yeah, <laughs> like, I just yeah. Dumb. yeah. <laughs> like I just like like I just did like you like you said I did my job. I got the respect of the older guys by not being an asshole. Mm-hmm. I came out and was the same guy every day and consistency. But like, I keep going back to like, yeah, I just didn't have, I didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know. Like I didn't understand the stuff. I didn't understand the media. I didn't, I didn't really care about people recognizing me. Like I just wanted to play football. Right. And uh, I respect that a lot. And I've always wanted to ask that question of other folks who've had similar experiences. And I think that's the consistent theme. Like we yeah. all were dumb as hell. We walked in there. We, you know, could play a little bit and figured out what our niche was, and we're just consistent enough to eventually get sure. the ball rolling. And then it was a snowball effect. Absolutely, I completely agree. I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah, it's football at the end of the day. It's just <laughs> the game we've been playing most of us since kids. It doesn't. That part doesn't change. Yeah, uh, I think that's what people people miss that like yeah. miss that nowadays. Is you know at the end of the day, with, with obviously with all the media and, and it gaining. You know, more traction in college football and NFL and stuff. Um, it's just football at the end of the day. So yeah. perfect. 
that's the part I think uh, is unfortunate for the kids, although they do reap the benefits, but they don't even notice they're getting pulled further away from that uh, in a sense. But but that is interesting, though, because you bring that up like you didn't have NIL. I didn't have NIL. Um, we didn't come with expectations. Yeah. Like you, you know, all of us here, the experience in the league, like where you get drafted, the amount of money, you know, you just sign a new contract. Like mm-hmm. when you walk into that room, when you walk into that locker room, there's expectations associated with whatever that may be. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the college level, it's almost unfair to put that on like a 17, 18, 19 year old kid. Right. Just because of all the development mm-hmm. that needs to go on. And talk about that a little bit. Like that's, that's something that I don't know if there's too many kids that can do what we did because Mm -hmm. like, yeah, there were some expectations because of like recruiting, but who gives a shit with like Mike Farrell writes on rivals at the end of the day. It's like, we still kind of had a clean slate to walk in and and be cool. But now you have kids stepping on campus who are five stars with like seven figure paychecks and fans have a, you know, rightfully so a lot of the people who, who give the money to, to cover that have a right to have higher expectations for that. So I think that that's a really interesting dynamic. And I want you to kind of talk about it, the cross and blend between the league and, and where college sports are now. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so much that goes into it. Like in my mind where, um, you know, there's, there's so much growing up that needs to be done. Like obviously we've all been around, um, you know, different guys on, on our team at Penn state and stuff that like, you kind of look at them and are like, all right, like, kind of need to grow up you know what i'm saying so it's 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 hard to see like like people feed into it and and maybe not look out for the best interests uh for an individual who might need that guidance and help to, to help grow up but how are you going to help them grow up when they have you know six figures in their in their bank account already like you know who are they like they're just gonna look at you and be like who the hell are you like <laughs> especially, especially, especially kids now i think my biggest frustration frustration was like the whole like like, I don't know how coaches recruit now because, like, when I was a recruit, and especially, like, you guys, like, when you guys went on business, you guys didn't put the jersey on. You didn't do these photo shoots and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, it was pointless. But now guys are going into visits expecting to put do all these photo shoots and use the media. And, like, I know they got mad at me because when I went on my visit, I was like, I'm not putting the jersey on. I'm not doing photo shoots. Like, right. like, I haven't earned that right yet. And mm-hmm. um, now but that was my biggest frustration is, like, seeing these kids come on visits and, like, I know this is cliche and this is petty of me, but like, like I'm, I, I wear 87 for Penn State. Like, don't put my jersey on. You know what I'm saying? Like, Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Like, like you got you were you you're 11. Michael was 11. Like, why are you putting on the starters? You know, that's just my opinion. That's just how I, I roll. Um, that's just how I kind of thought of it. And that honestly it kind of fueled me when I was at Penn State. Is like, you know, they're they're gonna replace me eventually. So why not just ball out and get out? You know what I'm saying? So, but I just. There's so many variables to go about it now. I just think it's hard with media now. You can't you can't go back, but it is what it is. But I think it's just hard for kids to understand that yeah. it's football. It's not you're making the money because of football. You're not making the money for anything else. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that sentiment, man. It's just, there's nothing wrong with feeling that way. I think a lot yeah. more people probably feel that way than you think. It's just overshadowed by the the glitz and glamour. And like you said, there's no going back, but we spoke off camera. There needs to be some reins kind of put built on this thing that we call college football moving Definitely. forward. And I know hack, I know we speak about it all the time and it will happen. It has to happen. Honestly. Um, mm-hmm. I think the kids get lost and they see the glitz and the glamor. They see what the guys are doing, but they don't see what the guys are doing to get in that situation. Mm-hmm. Like you said, I didn't, you as a kid, you didn't earn the right yet to wear that Jersey. Now that you did, in hindsight, you're like, I put my blood, sweat, and tears. You know, that's that's what college football is. Mm-hmm. But it, it has to be, you know, commercialized. So Absolutely. there's two sides to it. Yeah, no, there there definitely is a middle ground, but it is that's a that's a great perspective. And you were obviously raised right, and that's why you're having the success you're having right now. You know what I mean? In yeah. terms of your approach to it. And like I said, I think that there is a reality of, of where college football is now and, and where the business side of college football is. And I think it's fair that the players are finally getting what they need to get. But again, to Brandon's point, like there needs to be some, some guardrails around it because they aren't 23, 24 and like 
have that life experience and can handle a lot of the things that are coming with that. Right. right. So, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I totally agree with, with guys getting paid. Like, obviously I was like, I wish I get a little more money, but, uh, but like, like, like you, like you said, there needs to be, there needs to be a threshold or, or a, a guideline with, with it all. Those things are coming. I think those yeah. things are coming. Um, you know, you're seeing some of the stuff with like the SEC and the Big Ten forming that, mm-hmm. that yep. advisory yeah. group and the NCAA, I think, uh, riding off into the sunset slowly yeah. but surely. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting. But when you got to Pittsburgh, was Jesse still there? I think he was, right? Nah, Jesse was. Uh, I just missed. Him. I think he left uh, to go to. No, Jesse was. Yeah, Jesse left like two years before me. I think he left. He's Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. Yeah. But Jesse's great, man. Jesse, uh, we talk. A, we talk a bunch. Um, yeah. You know, I, I go to for rehab out in Pittsburgh. I go to the same guy he, he used. Um, and uh, obviously, he's close with Ty Howell, and I'm close with Ty, so kind of a little mutual connection there. So. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Talk about some of the mentors in your game, uh, whether it be, you know, from college or, or, or the league that you've talked to, obviously Jesse being one, but talk about some of those guys, what you've learned, what you've taken, what you've applied and so on and so forth. Yeah. I think uh, me, I think it was just, I've learned, I went to tight end you and I, and I talked to, you know, certain guys, uh, like Kittle and, and Kelson, obviously. Um, and you know they're great, but they're, they're, they're at the top of the game now where, um, you know, they, they operate at a different level. So for me, like I'm um, talking to guys, obviously like Mike and, and, and Jesse and, um, you know, helping Ebron help me when I got into Pittsburgh. Um, he's a great, he's a great guy. Yeah. Um, has been, um, you know, Bowers, I've talked to Bowers a bunch. Um, no offense. Um, just guys like that, that I've gained, um, you know, a relationship with, um, throughout my career that I've kind of used their experiences from just watching or, or talking to them and stuff. And, um, just implementing, you know, what they've learned into my game and um, just trying to take my game to the next level. 100%. Do you find yourself doing any of that to the young Penn State guys? Yeah, so, you know, I, I have a good relationship with Theo and, and Tyler Warren. Like, they, they were freshmen when I got in. Uh, or, yeah, they were – they were – they came in my, my last year at Penn State. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I was close with Brenton. Um, me and Zach were close. Even when he transferred, like, he was still – when they both got into the – to lead in the whole process, they'd reach out to me and stuff. So it's cool to see, um, you know, kind of roles reverses to like, like I looked up to, to Mike uh, when I was coming in and Jesse and um, even Kyle Carter, like Kyle has been great to me as well. Um, and then I was kind of cool to see roles reverse. Um, and, you know, Theo talked to me, Tyler, both, both Theo and Tyler talked to me about, um, you know, their, their decision to, to leave or stay. And um, I think they both made the right decision. Um, you know, I can't wait to see Theo. He's coming out of the Senior Bowl, and you know Tyler's going to be back. And I'll keep telling him, don't break my tight end record for touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do it. I think he has a pretty good shot. But uh, they're both great, and I'm excited to see their future, man. That's awesome. What do you What do you expect um, out of Tyler coming back? Let's Let's kind of bring this home to to Penn State here a little bit. Like, what I, I'm a big fan of the kid. I think he's. Mm-hmm the total package when it comes to what I think a tight end, if you were to look it up in the dictionary should be physical at the point of attack and the run game is very physical also when he, and he knows what his strengths are from a, from a pass game standpoint. Um, I got, he's a Virginia kid, so I got a soft spot for that. Um, what talk a little bit about him and then talk about maybe some of the guys, I don't know if you know a ton of the guys that are developing uh, younger guys in that room, but but what what do Penn State fans have to look forward to with that room specifically after the amount of mm-hmm. success that's had, you know, with you included and even before you going back to yeah. out there with Jesse and so on and so forth. Yeah, we, I mean, we've had we've had a lot of great times at Penn State. Um, you know, starting with with Jesse and Kyle, um, and uh, you know, I think that uh, you know Tyler Tyler reminds me of myself. Um, you know, he he kind of doesn't talk much. He he. He goes and he, he does his business and um, you know I've I've heard from 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 Ty and from other guys I've talked to in the program that he's becoming a leader and that's and it's also on the see get outside his comfort zone you know want to talk more because you know he is he's gonna have to be that guy in the offense uh, along with Drew um, you know to be those leaders um, you know they they've proven themselves as as worthy to you know speak up in the locker room and hold guys accountable and stuff and um, I think you know you guys have been around great teams and you know everyone I feel like says. Great teams, you know, they're, they're player-led and they're, they're player-accountable. So, 
Um, that's going to be big for them on the offensive side of the ball. And, you know, Tyler's a great tight end, man. He's, he's great. I think he's great. He showed it in the, in the uh, was it Sugar Bowl? Yeah, Sugar Bowl. Um, this past, they played all those moments. Peach. Peach. Peach Bowl, yeah, Peach Bowl. Uh, they run after catch. So I think he's, he's really good. He's yeah. really good at that. So um, he's a great tight end, man. And I'm uh, excited for this year for him. Heck yeah. And then obviously in the other room, sorry, uh, the other room, uh, I don't really know much of them. Um, uh, I know Rap, Andrew Rappelay, he, uh, he's from my area, so I train with him a little bit. He's, he's really good as well. I think he's going to have a big, big year um, coming off of retro, I think. So we good. He, I, he was my surprise pick. I talked to Ty as well um, yeah. at length about him. He's got, he's got a lot of. He's got some. He's got some juice. He's got some, got some shit to him. I like that. I like yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> From the stories I've heard, he's got some. He's got some shit to him. Yeah, yeah. A little what bit of northeasterner in him. Oh yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> don't put up. Don't put up with stuff, man. <laughs> Pat, what are you um, outside of the tight end room as a whole? This twenty twenty four season coming up. What are you looking for? Expectations. Offense. Let's start. Let's start offensive expectations, and what what would you like to see? Yeah, um, I'm obviously. I think um, with the new coordinator, um, I think he came from Kansas. Uh, you know, I, their offense has been great. I think you know. I think uh, from what I've heard is he likes to utilize his, you know the people that he's got at his, his disposal, and um, you know puts him in the best best position to succeed. And I think that's what a great OC does, and um, obviously I'm excited for Drew's development. Um, in this off season, I think it's big for him. Um, but obviously, I think the office should be, they got talent everywhere. Uh, I think Keandre came back, um, and if they can get healthy at the receiver, I think Harrison Wallace was banged up last year and stuff. And so they can get him, and uh, they, I mean, there's not there's not a lack of talent at all in that in that receiver room or in the offense and um, the running backs back. They have, they have all the potential to to do what they want and their goals. And obviously, with the playoffs, I, I mean, I'd like to think they get in um, this year with the, with the twelve teams and. Um, you know, mentality wise, they just gotta get in and let the chips fall with a man, man. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh we, we share a lot of the same sentiment about this team and mm-hmm. I think a lot of it just has to come down to like overall mentality development. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you when you watch them play the Michigans and the Ohio State's mm-hmm. world, it's almost like they kind of play not to lose. And yeah. my my thought process is like shoot your shot, man. Like don't yeah. dip your water let it swing and I hope that Andy brings a little bit more of uh that mentality especially the offensive side of the ball right yeah. I think just the ultimate confidence and like we belong here we're the same team when you look at it like you said yeah. from a roster standpoint talent standpoint like let's just let's shoot our shot and see what happens so with that being said though um kind of what I touched on before we got on here like we want to treat this as it's kind of a channel for our lettermen to come in, talk about what it means to be a Penn State player, talk about some of their experiences. So let's start with the first one. Like you, man, when you look at the way that the program's headed, when you look at the development the type of kids that are coming out of it, like what does it mean to be a Penn Stater? What um, what kind of foundational characteristics do you see and some of the things that you've carried on with you and and hold hold near and dear when it comes to when it comes to your alma mater? Yeah, um, just, you know, in my mind, uh, just the history of the program and just the, uh, like, I think Coach Franklin and, and even, you know, Penn State as a whole, as a fan base, they do a great job of, of recognizing, you know, the greats that came before. And just, you know, being in the building, walking down to the locker room or team room and seeing, like, the the uh, Hall, of, Hall of Fame or All American Wall and just seeing all the Letterman and stuff up there, like, how can you not feel, you know, you know, prideful and stuff, you know, seeing guys like when I came in, like you had, like seeing all the stuff that you had on the wall and um, other guys that played my position and stuff. Like, how can you not feel juiced up to try and continue that legacy of wearing the blue and white? Um, you know, I think, um, you know, there's so much pride to be a uh, Penn State in the line when you walk around. And, I mean, I get recognized just as much as being a Penn State football player than I do as a Steeler. And, um, you know, it, it, wearing that blue and white carries a lot of weight on it. And, um, you know, just you got to go out there and um, give your all for not only the the team, but for the whole, you know, whole alumni base. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then let's, let's go to some of your favorite memories, man. Like what do you, what do you take away? Maybe some on the field, maybe some off the field. We've, yeah. we've had a 
we've had a few off the field stories yeah. uh, thrown around here that have been pretty interesting. Um, as long as you keep it PG, keep it yeah. PG thirteen. <laughs> yeah, uh, on, on the field, my, my favorite memory was um, you know just being around the guys, um, just being around you know guys in the locker room, and um, you know again, I feel like I gained a lot of respect from 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 your know, older guys, the younger guys, and um, you know I was voted captain my sophomore year, and not a lot of guys do that, so I think. Being, I think that was a, um, you know, kind of a, a, a leader for the time I was there. And I'm very appreciative of that. And, um, you know, that, that being a captain takes over all the other awards and accomplishments that I had at Penn State because, you know, it's a great, that's the best accomplishment in my mind that you can have is gaining the respect from others. Um, and that one hand catch was Ohio State that Joan talked about. That was, <laughs> that was my first start um, catching that. I had no idea what to do. I'm um, seeing the sea of white. Like, I, I don't even know how to celebrate this. Like, I, well, that's by far my favorite memory. Um, and you know, honestly, you know, credit to Mike. Like when I visited, actually, it's because you guys know him. But Naeem Mormon, nice. I visited. I visited Penn State. My, I was a sophomore in high school, and I was on the sideline. This dude came up to me, and he was like, "What position do you play?" And I was like, "Tight end." And he was like, "I bitch tight ends," and walked away. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, that was good, bro. Like, it was that, 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 that was, that, that, that was kind of, right, This is pretty cool. This is a cool environment, man. Yeah. Shout out That's to Nye, so man. That was my big bro. Shoot, he hosted me on my recruiting visit. Yeah. Uh, big part of why I decided to come to. Naeem's a great guy. Coaching, <laughs> coaching with Joe Moe and his zips right now. We, yeah. we got to get you back on, Nye. You'll see this. We got to get you on here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. No, that's awesome, Pat. But listen, man, um, I know you're kicking off your off season. Just get back to the gym. I know how that is, putting down the uh, 12 ounce cans and <laughs> yeah. bells again. Um, yeah. So, so best of luck with that. And then, uh, obviously, we'll be uh, we'll be watching and, and pulling for you as always. And then, yes, whenever you want to hop back on, bro, come back on. We'll get you up there cool. when we get on campus, get together. Um, sure. uh, we appreciate your time, bro. Yeah. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. Woo!